Yat eight the my son and Nishne. Hi, I am Navajo Grandma, and here we are again. Today we're learning about Navajo tacos, and it is still regarding fry bread. So I'm gonna sing you a little quick song that is my song. Sh means mine, song means sen. Sh sen. Okay, here it goes. Okay, you did not understand what I just said. But I just said basically that fry bread is our sustenance. The dene, it's our sustenance and it tastes good and that I want some. So here goes. We have a cute little presentation here and I, I've got the layout here. And remember the world is our stage. I'm in front of my garage. So it's okay. Now, um, Back in the 60s, if you can see this, it says 1960. Um, there was, there's a story that goes along with this fry bread. And I'm not sure anybody knows about this, but a long while back in the 60s, um, there is a place in Window Rock, Arizona, and it's called the Navajo uh, just kind of like a Navajo restaurant, a Navajo hotel. There's two people that are involved here. There is a gentleman by the name Hastin, not gentleman, say Hastin. His name is Alan Yazi. And he had been walking through the, uh, from uh, Forest Lake in Arizona. And he, that's quite a, a trip. You know, you're hitchhiking. That's what a lot of Diné people do out in the reservation. And he was headed towards Window Rock, Arizona. And mainly because his friend, who is Lou Shepard, worked at the Navajo Inn there in uh, Window Rock, Arizona. They were good friends. So all day, Alan is hitchhiking, all kinds of stuff, and then he makes it there. And he's hungry. And he told Lou, hey, I am hungry, the chinishne. And he said, what do you have? And you know, it's kind of closing time as well. And so um, Lou told him, you know, uh, I've got, you know, he prepares all kinds of foods. He was, uh, Lou was kind of like the cook and the manager of the place. And so Lou said, well, you know what? I just have, the only thing I have here at this point is guess what? Fry bread, that they need large. And, and so what he did was, um, he did not use paste picante, which is my favorite. He did use some chili and sprinkled it over the fry bread. But Alan did not, he, uh, he said, no, I need more than that. And so Lou thought, okay, he goes to the kitchen. He said, you know what? Guess what? I've got beans. So he said, um, so he said, let me go in there and let's see what I can do. So Alan, or Lou, went and got the beans and he spoke placed it on top of the fry bread, which I'm doing right now. I, you can't see, if you can see, I am putting beans on top of the fry bread. And that's what Lou, trying to be creative and trying to feed his hungry friend. And lo and behold, guess what? Oh my. And Alan thought, well, you know what? That looks good. A little pickety snickety guy there. So he said, you know what? How about, do you have anything else besides this? I already had a little chili, 
just didn't do it. So uh, Lou said, okay. So he went and, and got, uh, brought out a plethora, that's a white man's word, and guess what? He said, you know what? All I have is onions, I've got some tomatoes, and I have some lettuce. And I've got, guess what, cheese. So um, Lou thought for a moment, and guess what he did? He said, okay, I've already got the beans on, I've got the beans on the fry bread, so how about, let's put some cheese on it. Okay, so Alan was watching, yeah, that looks good, yep. Yeah, that's my manly food. Okay, put the cheese on. Because see, Alan wanted a nice meal. Hungry man's meal after you've been, you know, hitchhiking. So, then he said, I wonder, and then, then Lou said, well, you know what, how about, uh, how about let's put some lettuce on there. I've got some lettuce. Sprinkled it on. This is in the 60s now, hippie years and one of my favorite years anyways and here and then he said okay let's see and uh, and of course alan said let's put what else do you have so he wasn't happy with that so then uh he said okay i've got onions of course we all love onions at least we do danae people do so here is the onions he piled the onions on lou's eyes is starting to really get big thinking yes that's good then he said, hey, I got some tomatoes. Let's sprinkle tomatoes on there. So he sprinkled the tomatoes on there. How cool is that? Shaka, that was good. That, uh, never mind, that's Polynesian. Anyways, so he said, then he didn't get Pace Picante. Could, could have been around then, but so he said, how about, he said, to make it really good, Let's pour some chili on it. So guess what? Yum! That is what happened. And there you go. Yum! Here's for some, for some of you people. Come and taste. This is what happened. How cool is that? Friend for a friend. And Lou created the first Navajo taco. But that's not the story, okay? The story is, okay, it was called the Lou Special. The Lou Special, that's what it was on the menu. And then one day, a man came in and said, it was uh, one of the Caucasian men who came from the Alabama, somewhere from there, and he comes walking in and he says to uh, Lou, uh, because apparently he had been there sometimes, and he said, hey, I want some of that Navajo taco. Lou said, what? He said, I want some Navajo taco. And Lou says, well, uh, uh, let's look at the menu. Okay, so I thought, hmm. Looked at the menu and gee whiz. He looked through it and, well, I have the Lou special, but no Navajo taco, never heard of this. And so um, he thought, okay, so the guy says, well, show me your Navajo special, or your Lou special. And then here comes, here comes Lou, Lou special. He brings it out to this tourist man from Al uh, Alabama. And he says, oh, this is it. And goes, yes, that's it. That's a Navajo taco. Lou goes, oh, so guess what? It became a sensation because see before it became now the name, it was named Navajo Taco. Everybody from everywhere was wanting this. And Lou was just like, a, it was the best sensation in all the world. And uh, my father was a police officer and he used to talk about the, the Lou special and him and mom would always go there and they would have the Lou special. And then one day dad came home and said, oh, guess what? It's no longer called the new Lou, new, uh, Lou special. It's called Navajo Tacos. 
he goes, isn't that funny? They all, you know, my dad's silly. And um, so that's what happened. How cool is that? So anyways, um, and of course, guess what? Everybody said, you always have to have a soda McModa with it, Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola. Of course, back then they looked like this and how cool. And so now you know why it's called the Navajo Taco. And this is fun. So now you know what no one knew. And this is fun. This is wonderful information that you get to know. Um, I was remembering that and I thought of it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool because my dad knew these guys and I don't know if they're still alive, but I love, thank you to Alan Yazi and for being friends with Lou Shepard and that they, that Lou had such compassion for his friend because his friend was hungry and created this. So, voila, the Navajo taco appeared. How cool, the Lou special Navajo taco. So now you know what other people don't know. Cool, huh? So that is our wonderful presentation. And notice what I have in my hand. That's another fun video we're gonna have. And it's been kind of my, my little music thing. So I'm going to sing just the last chord and I'm going to say, Hey, nay, yo, way, hey, nay, yo, way, thought the need gosh. Hey, nay, yo, way, bay, e, non, go. Hey, nay, yo, way. That's how you always sing the song. Hey, nay, yo, way. <laughs> so it's fun. I hope you love learning from Grandma and your Dinama Sonnet. Please subscribe, guys, please. And thank you for watching. Appreciate all you do. We're going to go have a nice Navajo taco. No more loose special in Navajo taco. So uh, I guess this is it. And I will see you again in another video. And here is a Navajo taco for you. Okay? So you can go home and make one or go enjoy it. No overkill. Remember, moderation in all things. But it's kind of hard to moderate with this thing. <laughs> so, happy day. Thank you. Love you all.